Today we're going to teach you A to Z how to install this beautiful faucet. She's a Moen, stunning fit and finish, single handle, and longevity. This will last you. Faucets range anywhere from $80 to hundreds of dollars. This is about $120. Calling in a contractor plumber, they're going to charge you minimum $200 to replace your faucet. Think about that now. Multiply it. Do the math on how many faucets you have in your own home. Skill level from 0 to 10, this is about a 5. Perfect DIY project for you, the homeowner. Let's take a moment to go through some of the tools that will be required. Obviously your faucet, uh, Bob's top pick, the mowing. To the left, you're going to need some water pump pliers. To the right of that, two different sized, large and small, adjustable wrench. And then the final item is the flexible supply line hoses. These do not come with faucets. Sometimes for a kitchen faucet, they may come with it, but they're permanently attached to the body of the faucet. So when you're out shopping, make sure to read the package. That way you know if it comes with water supply lines, and if it does not, always buy the top pick. Steel, metal, braided supply lines. Talk about the variety of sinks that you would be installing your faucet in. As you can see, this is a three hole sink. Some of them have a single hole in the center. The style trend, design trend these days is to have a single hole in the center. That way the faucet rises nicely, neatly out of it without the need for an old world deck plate. However, if the sink has three holes, you must install the matching faucet, which would have a deck plate. So again, this is important. Make sure you know what type of sink you have or what type of sink you'll be purchasing. A smart move right now would be to pre-install the supply lines onto the faucet body before installing the faucet into the sink. Otherwise, you're gonna be laying on your back under the countertop installing these. Now, this isn't always possible, depending on the size of the holes in your sink. But first, we're gonna attach them by hand. I'm working with my left here, it's awkward, so I don't block the view for those of you at home. Just hand tight. Now if I take my wrench and I just tighten this, I'll end up twisting the copper and the copper is going to burst. So you need a backup wrench. You want to grab the nut, nice and solid. Grab the other one, which is the nut that's a part of the fill hose and tighten. Constantly keeping pressure on the small rat wrench so that you don't end up turning the copper line. Okay, that's tight. Now I'm just going to give it one more snug. There we go. Same thing on the other one. Now we set this in the sink. Let's crawl underneath. All right, we're gonna do our best here to give you a bird's eye view. We're under the faucet. We're not gonna worry right now about centering it. Now for those of you at home, this will be a little uncomfortable, but think about all the money you're saving. This is the washer. This has to go in first. There's the thread for the faucet. Slide that on. There's a secondary washer. Slide that over the thread. And then there's the nut. Now for those of you watching at home, wouldn't it hurt to have a cushion or a blanket under the vanity 
just to keep uh, this wood from digging into your backside. But I've been doing this as a living for 20 years, so I'm, I'm a little immune to it. Same thing on the other side now. I don't know how well you can see this at home. I hope you can. The Just Ask Bob show, we go to a lot of great lengths and effort to demystify home renovations, topic by topic, to try to teach you how to repair, remodel, and upkeep your own homes. So you can see it's a little awkward working under here. It's nice when you have a helper. It'd be nice if I didn't keep dropping things. Once I get this tightened up, then my helper is going to adjust the faucet. Okay, Nick, for the viewers at home, make the faucet look completely crooked. Pretty crooked? Okay, that's not how you want to leave the faucet installed. That's why either you're going to climb in and out or you're going to have a helper on top. Okay, Nick, straighten it up for us, please. Once you have it straight, Nick, sight line it. Get a good look at it and, you know, sight line your eyesight to it. Make sure it's perfectly straight. Okay, stay there a moment, Nick. So that's straight, right? Okay, well, give it some pressure. Just while I tighten these up. Going to use the small wrench. Is it still staying straight, Nick? Yeah. Okay. And the same thing on the on the right side. Not too tight though. These sinks are made out of China. Not in China, but out of China. Uh, so you don't want to over tighten it because you could crack it. Okay, next we connect the water lines. On the left, the red, PEX piping, modern new home construction, with the shot off valve. Obviously it's in the off because the system is pressurized. On the right of that, you can see the blue water line with the shot off. Now we're on the second last step. We're attaching the flexible supply line to the shut off valve. You want to start by threading it on by hand. Keep it nice and steady, Nick. We got my young one, Nick Acidorian, on the camera. Now, just like before, we're using a backup wrench. Let me actually show you here. If I only tighten this nut, I may end up spinning and loosening the shutoff valve from the crimp fitting on the PEX plastic pipe. You don't want to do that. So use your first wrench just to support the pipe and the shutoff. Then your second wrench. This is awkward here because I don't want to block the view of the camera. And you tighten. Nice and snug. OK. 
Okay. Same thing for the other side, and then we're going to show you how to attach the strainer. Final step before turning on the water and testing the faucet. If you're cutting into the copper or you're soldering or doing any involved plumbing, you should always take off the aerator. The aerator's got a fine screen in it, so you don't want to trap any debris in it. Always take it off, and they're easy to replace. Put it in the bottom. Wiggle, line up the threads, and then tighten. I would stop at hand tight. If you have an issue, you can use adjustable water pump pliers on them, but you should wrap the pliers with electrical tape or cloth so as not to mar the nice chrome finish.